precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm thy light take my hand precious Lord and lead lead me on home yeah we're so thankful to be back here in the studio with you uh, bringing you Sharon Renee bringing you light on the gospel and uh, with all the crew is here. Uh, we've got uh, Sister Melinda is on the keyboard. We've got uh, Sister Darcy, our missionary to Africa, and announcer. She's going to be. She's here. And thank God that we've got uh, Josh Kaplinger is on the camera, and uh, Tahiti couldn't be here. And uh, we are just Jimmy Morris is our director, so we're just here. Just happen having a good time, and we're happy we got a Mary Kaplinger, Minister Mary Kaplinger uh, is the coordinator. She's here, thank God. So uh, we're going to do, Granny's in the kitchen uh, uh, making, I think she's making goulash, and um, that's what I smell is goulash. And um, um, I'm, I think that uh, it's about time for us to sing. Uh, what are we going to sing, Darcy? Power in the blood. Power in the blood. All right. Thank God. There. From the Okay. Would you be free from your burden? That's the introduction. Okay. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you live daily? His praises to sing. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. Of the Lamb, of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power blood of Jesus, of the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, and that's for the adults. We sang that for the big people. We got to sing something for the little people, people Darcy. For Je the kids, what are we going to sing? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus. 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, we are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, we are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Uh, Jesus loves me. This I know. You can always be sure. You think nobody loves you? You can always say, I know Jesus does, whether you're 50 years old or 95 years old. Or if you're 10 years old or 5 years old, you can always say, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones and the big ones too. To him belong, we are weak, but he is strong. We're so thankful for that song. And at this time, we're going to bring to you our, our speaker of the hour in the person of our, our minister, Mary Kaplinger, who is the coordinator for Light on the Gospel. We're so happy to be that she's feeling better and back with us. And uh, we know that your prayers counted a lot. And uh, she's here. And we're just anxious to hear the beautiful message that God has given her. Without any further ado, I bring to you Minister Mary Kaplinger. God bless you, Sister Mary. Thank you. Some people don't read past page four in the Bible. The creation story is on the first three pages, and that's pretty awesome. But they've been told not to believe that God was creator because, well, you've heard the stories. You've heard the scoffers. They've got lots to say about the, what they think they know. But should we trust the word of scoffers instead of the word of God? Should we trust that sort of knowledge? What, these, what those people in the know say is not true. But let's just pretend for a moment and consider, I'm sorry, consider what is said on page four of most Bibles. Genesis 2.17 reads, but of the one tree in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. God had created two human beings to be very like himself, so closely identified with him that they were clothed in light as well. He made them to have creative minds like his, able to imagine and plan a future using the memories of the past. And unlike anything else he had created, their spirits were linked to his eternal spirit. Like a father, like the best father ever, God has spent his time with them in the garden that he made especially for them. A garden filled with food and every pleasure to give them a delightful life. He had taught them everything they needed to know to take care of this garden 
and all the creatures he had also created to live on earth so that they would rule over everything that God had made for them. Now it was time to give them dominion over the earth so they could expand the garden and make the whole world become a physical heaven filled with their children. So God repeated his instructions, which included only one thing, one thing they must not do. He said, but of the one tree in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. It almost sounds like as soon as God had left, they stood looking over this marvelous gift that he gave them. And Satan, hidden in a snake's body, came up and suggested that God had kept the best part for himself, that central tree called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he said, he said they should just go ahead and eat this fruit anyway, since God's warning was empty and they wouldn't die. The way the story is told, it sounds like they didn't hesitate. After all, they knew God was wonderful and his knowledge ruled the earth. They wanted to be more like God, so they ate the fruit of the tree that he told them not to eat. They took what God had told them not to take and they betrayed his trust because they wanted something else more than the relationship they already had with him. It wasn't the fruit they decided to steal from God. <coughs> it was the power Satan suggested, <coughs> and they believed that the knowledge of both good and evil would give them power that God had withheld. Ha, 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 says the scoffer. They didn't die. Well... The life they had always known died. Isn't that a death? That night and every night after that, they slept outside the garden, outside where no free fruit trees had been planted and there was no safe place to rest, where they would be opposed and exhausted as they worked for an uncertain harvest at odds with each other. A mighty angel barred the way back into the garden and they were on their own in a hostile place because they had wanted to be independent of God. And they had betrayed God's trust and decided to believe Satan who told them to distrust and disobey God. So all they had ever known, being loved, provided for, protected, taught by God, and being delighted with themselves and each other, all of that died and was gone forever. They were no longer clothed in the glory of God, but naked and ashamed of their loss. They ate the forbidden fruit and immediately Adam and Eve knew shame, fear, and betrayal. So they were afraid of each other as well as God. Yes, they now knew both good and evil, but separated from God, it only made them miserable and they couldn't avoid the evil God had kept away from them. God no longer walked and talked with them each day in the garden. Betrayal of a trust kills trust. The moment a betrayal is exposed, trust dies, and insofar as the betrayed person is concerned, the betrayer has died. Everything can be lost, and innocence can never be recovered. In the day that we have the knowledge of these things, 
the knowledge of good and evil apart from God, we surely die, even though our own body still lives. In fact, the Bible tells us on page six that Adam lived physically 930 years. But spiritually, relationally, he had been dead. Maybe the scoffer isn't paying attention. Maybe he's so pleased with his own cleverness that he thinks he has confounded the Bible believer and diminished God as well. So he doesn't see how inadequate his understanding of death must be if he thinks they didn't die. If you have been betrayed, you know that someone you thought loved and valued you threw you under the bus to get something they loved and valued more than you. The betrayer acts only after this decision has been made. Both betrayer and betrayed knows, know that this is true. King David decided that his loyal officer Uriah's life was less important than the pleasure he wanted to have with Uriah's wife. Then arranging to have Uriah killed before he could, dis could, dis before he could discover that Dayton ha David had already, David had already destroyed Uriah's family and future. Deciding to have him killed was easy. Betrayal brings about death, even when we don't actually kill or acknowledge the death. Each of us experiences a yearning for Eden, for life in the garden. We will deny ourselves all year to buy a week of our version of Eden. Disneyland, Las Vegas, cruise ships all promise to deliver an Eden. Advertisers suggest that buying their product will put us in our own paradise of personal power and pleasure. Worldly people say sex sells, but the perversion of sex, the betrayal of this most intimate relationship of trust, proves how truly dead we are today outside of Eden. There are some who think they can re-enter the garden, in Eden without God, of course, by living a perfect physical life eating only food from their own garden so they know it's free from any contamination, and imagining that this was the life Adam lived in Eden before they died. Others flee into the solitude they believe they can control and try to be empowered on their own terms through their own efforts. They build visible and invisible fortresses to protect themselves while they work to achieve personal perfection. And some are more aggressive, trying to eliminate anyone and anything that would oppose or hinder their success. Some even go on to set up thrones for themselves, copying their silent partner, Satan. But just as none of them gave themselves life, None can recreate Eden's perfect life for themselves. And when they speak of the God of the Bible, it's quite evident that they don't love him or value him. Sin had entered the world, and with sin came death. Let's talk about sin for a minute. At the heart, the root, the core of every sin is a decision to betray someone's trust, to get what I want. I have a choice to choose what I value most, either the one I should love or myself. All life comes from God and reflects his nature God's nature is to love, and that means he chooses to value what he loves more than his own comfort or pleasure. 
In fact, his pleasure is to give pleasure, to give pleasure first to the ones he loves, irregardless of what it cost him. As long as I am in union with God, I will make the same choices. I will choose to love and honor those who I love and who trust my love. This is God's delight. But I do have the choice to choose selfishly, to disregard the pleasure and trusting relationship others need from me. We're told that Satan, who had been created to please and praise his creator with all the beauty and delight of jewels and music that God had put at his disposal, decided one day that he would rather receive praise for that beauty himself. And at that moment, the bond of love and unity between the archangel and God was severed. Having made himself God's rival, Satan became God's enemy and no longer came to him with love. Then the archangel was stripped of God's life, which reflected his loving and loyal nature, so that only death and hatred remained within Satan. We all live outside of the Garden of Eden because we each chose to live independently of God and continually choose to betray each other. Therefore, we also died and are always dying. Love and truth no longer rule our choices and all the knowledge we get on our own is contaminated by dishonesty and selfishness. But what about God? The one who was betrayed by Adam, Eve, and Satan in the garden, he didn't die. He didn't lose ownership of Eden. Unlike the creatures he created, he didn't lo lose the power to choose when and how he would live. Had his nature changed too? What did God do after he was betrayed? Let's suppose that Satan's real goal in tempting Adam and Eve was to, be to betray God, was to try to cause God's loving nature to die. To make the Lord God Almighty react according to Satan's plan. And in this way to destroy God along with his creation. When Satan went to war against God in heaven, God could have lashed out to destroy Satan and the angels who joined him, allowing his hatred of evil to destroy his creation in the process. But praise God, that's not what happened. Instead, God's whose love and nature is, whose nature is to love and to create, simply evicted Satan and his mob from the places God had created for them in heaven. When Satan heard God warn Adam that death was the result of eating the fruit of that one tree, perhaps he thought it was possible that God would kill the first two of his creation in Eden. And then Satan, always full of evil malice, thought this would be a win-win for him he could destroy the relationship between God and his new creation and get dominion over them and take over the earth. Plus, this third betrayal might cause God to hate instead of love, to become a destroyer instead of a creator. And then Satan figured he'd be the stronger hater and destroyer and he could grab both earth and heaven as his own domain. Adam and Eve were God's babies who had known nothing of evil and malice. Satan wanted them to see and experience both evil and malice as well as death. And in this, I think we would agree, Satan succeeded. But Satan was fooling himself when he thought he could destroy God's love with betrayal. 
still on page four of the Bible, we're told that God, what God did in this situation. First he found the couple, fearfully trying to hide from him in the garden, and had them tell him what had happened and what they had done. They weren't completely honest anymore. And each shifted the blame. But he replaced the fig leaves they had tried to cover their shame with. And he replaced them with animal skins that would truly protect them. And in doing this, God brought about the first deaths on earth, physical deaths. But he brought about those deaths free from anger, selfish or, selfishness, or hatred to serve the needs of those he loved. So death would still be subject to love and not the other way around. God shed innocent blood to comfort the betrayers. Each would die at a time God would choose, but their guilt remained, their separation from God continued, and would continue until God's plan for redemption was completed. Notice that God didn't remain a wallflower in Eden but he continued to care for the whole family of Adam as they spread out over the earth. Then turning to the serpent-covered Satan, God spoke to the snake first. If Satan had promised to elevate this creature to a higher position, a dragon perhaps, a higher position than God had given it, now it would be lowered further still, with no legs to lift it out of the dust. A visible reminder of betrayal, the snake would always be an enemy of the children of Eve. Finally, God spoke to Satan, promising his inevitable doom beneath the feet of a man God had already chosen. The time is coming when Satan will no longer exist in God's creation. <clears throat> Fast forward through the Old Testament's tales of the fruit of the tree, Cain wanting protection after killing Abel, Lot choosing the best land for himself, Joseph sold into slavery by his brothers, Saul crazy with jealousy, a whole range of selfish betrayals, and no one was innocent. Only Jesus Christ, God's own, only and own incarnate Son, would remain completely loyal and obedient to his Father, Creator God. Only Jesus would remain in union with God's loving nature. Every other human being on earth would be guilty of betraying God, preferring to have their own knowledge of good and evil, to being taught by God himself and obeying him. Everyone would prefer to suit themselves when a choice was offered. Everyone, including you and me and every scoffer. Amazingly, God's final defeat of all evil Satan included, would and will be accomplished by a perfect partnership of God and man through Jesus Christ, the only 100% obedient man on earth. Through his innocent death on the cross, Jesus took upon himself all the separation and punishment mankind deserved for every kind of betrayal of God and each other. But much more importantly, what God did through Jesus was to give a new nature, a rebirth of unity with God to everyone who would turn to him for restoration and reconciliation. This offer to those who had rejected and betrayed him had to be God's choice. It was an unbelievably costly offer made with no strings attached. 
there was no way mankind could restore themselves. Jesus, God's second Adam, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising its shame, and died sacrificially just to be eternally reuni reunited in love with his creation. On the day of God's choosing, all evil and death will be banished from his creation, and all his beloved children will live joyfully with him forever. So dear scoffer, please listen. Satan is the liar. God always tells the truth to you because a God always loves you. Keep reading the Bible and let yourself think that it could be true and believe that it is true, that the Bible is telling you the truth. Ask God to give you the knowledge of good and evil he always intended to give you. Read the rest of the story and as you read, ask him to show you his love. Don't let lies make you hide from God's friendship and care. Let Jesus restore to you every relationship killed by betrayal so you can begin to live in love and truth again. God has for all time been at work trying to rescue all people from the devastation done by Satan's lies and betrayal. Jesus lived and died outside of Eden so that you could be reconciled with God and each other and live happily ever after. Please choose to believe him and you will begin the process and inherit eternal life in heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Kaplinger, I'm going to impose on you to do the prayer for all those hundreds of people that are viewing and thousands of, of that will hear your message. I want you to pray for everybody, especially those that are maybe being deceived by, uh, by Satan. Would you, would you pray even if for someone that's maybe sick and even mention those uh, uh, going back to school this fall? Would you pray for everybody? Lord, we come before you knowing that you know each one of us. You know our current situation and our past, and you know the potential that you built into us. Lord, help us to know your love for us. Give us your view. Give us your love and your wisdom. Lord, we thank you for already providing salvation for us. Help us to see it and know it and live in it. For all our days, thank you for the protection that you give us. You don't let us go. You love us forever. For the sake of Jesus Christ and your own love, amen. Amen. We're so thankful for the beautiful message. And um, uh, at this time, uh, uh, we just thank God for the message. And uh, we're going to, um, uh, at this time, we're going to have, uh, I, I don't see much to add to that. She told such a beautiful story and so thorough. I uh, don't see much room for comment. I just want to hear it again. I'll go on YouTube and listen or turn Comcast on, on and listen on, listen on the channel 20 or, or channel 75 or, or some of the stations that we're on on Comcast. Or I can always go to YouTube 24 seven and get uh, Minister uh, Mary Kaplinger's message again. So at this time, uh, we uh, are very glad to be have uh, Melinda, Sister Melinda, back with us. And uh, uh, she's going to play just a closer walk with thee. God bless you, Sister Melinda.
would have. Just a closer walk with thee. Isn't that what we all, all want right now? Right at this very moment, we all want a closer walk with thee. That's our prayer. After hearing such a beautiful message from Minister Kaplinger, uh, we all want a closer walk uh, because we, we know about God's love is still reaching out to us. Thank you for such a beautiful, beautiful rendition of just a closer walk. We need that. I need it. So we hope we're going to have uh, uh, her play something else later on. All right, at this time, it's, we're going to have our announcements. And uh, uh, before we pray, I've got my oil here to pray, and then we'll have the sinner's prayer uh, just before that. All right, so Sister Darcy with the announcements. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Light on the Gospel. Before I read the announcements, I want to remind you to write in, call in, uh, or email to receive a free pair of earrings. It's sort of hard to see the black ones. Okay, a free pair of earrings. I am making these earrings myself, and I can make any size. Well, I just dropped one. I can make any size earrings, small, medium, or large. I can make the color that you want. I may uh, have a, a, a difference in design. All you have to do is call in, write in, or um, send your email to Light on the Gospel. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are invited to worship with Sharon and Darcy and all are welcome to visit United Faith Pentecostal Church, 1156 Aldrich Avenue North, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55411. The pastor is Suffolk and Bishop Norman W. Parker, Sr. Call 612-521-6965 for service times and directions. You are also welcome to visit and worship at Shiloh Temple International Ministries, 1201 West Broadway Avenue North, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55411. The Honorable Bishop Richard D. Howe, Jr. is pastor. Call 612-302-1463 for information or transportation. Sharon will continue to pray for the sick. Send your questions and prayer requests with your name and phone number to Sharon at ivorytowers at comcast.net. The email again, ivorytowers at comcast.net. You may also request your earrings and don't forget, I make bracelets and I offer bracelets also. All you have to do is send the size and color you desire. Currently, free, and these things are free of charge. I am making the earrings and bracelets free of charge. Postage paid. Postage paid. Sharon will continue to pray for the sick, as I have said. Send your questions and prayer requests with your name and phone number to Ivory Towers at Comcast.net or address regular mail to P.O. Box 120-922, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55112. Pete. That is P.O. Box 120-922, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55112. Light on the Gospel can be viewed on YouTube at Light on the Gospel TV show. Melinda Malcolm can also be seen on YouTube at Piano Hymns by Melinda Malcolm. That is at Piano Hymns by Melinda Malcolm. I want to retake a second and remind you all of my favorite scripture, which I seem to be reminded of this constantly. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, 
and he shall direct thy path. That is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Thank you for watching Light on the Gospel. Thank you so much for uh, those announcements, and I hope they'll be sending in for their free jewelry. We send it to you. Just tell us what you want, and uh, we'll be send sending it to you free, postage paid. You don't have to do anything. Just give us your prayer request. And so we're just happy that we got our post office box uh, given to you so you can uh, uh, write for what you want, or you may want some special prayer, or if you want my me to call you, and we can have prayer over the phone for your special needs or special uh, maybe pain. Um, it seems like in the, the Lord has blessed me so remarkably with backs. I have prayed for people on the, on the phone and had prayer uh, lines, and the people with the worst back, that was impossible. Uh, I got the word uh, months later that they didn't have any more problems with their back in spite of all the surgeries they had had and everything. So I, I'm glad that it seems like there's certain things that yeah, he healed God, he, Jesus Christ heals everything all the time. Sharon Renee Parker can heal nothing at any time. I cannot heal a fallen eyelash or a broken fingernail. But I want you to know Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Hebrews 13 and verse 8. He healed then and he heals now. But you have to believe him. That's all you have to do is ask him and believe him. And so we uh, I want to uh, pray for you. And uh, uh, after I pray, uh, we're going to have our sinner's prayer. And so that you can uh, make up, you have your mind. I hope your mind is just about made up or completely made up that you want to be a Christian. Say, you mean to tell me Sharon's trying to persuade me to be a Christian? Absolutely. But Jesus Christ said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so that's what, we, that's what we're endeavoring to do is to get, to let you know that Christ died for you. He came, was born of a virgin, grew up and died, went to the cross, died, rose again the third day and went back up into heaven and he's coming back again. But is he coming back for you? He's coming back for me. And uh, I hope you too. So uh, this is what we say, what are you trying to do? I want you to know God's alive and well, and you need to get to know him. If you know him, oh, I already know, know him better. We can know him better. I'm trying to get closer, get closer walk that Sister Melinda prayed about. I'm trying to do that daily, daily. That's my endeavor is to get a closer walk with Jesus. And so I hope you'll make that uh, uh, part of your many endeavors is getting a closer walk uh, with the Lord. And so at this time, I um, want to pray. And here, did you get a bottle of pure, of pure virgin olive oil? I'm sure you did, did you? Okay, good. And uh, we've got a, our men's hanky. It's a great big white men's hanky. Big hanky. And, and that way you can put some blessed oil, the blessed oil, you can put it on your hanky, you can cut it up, you can and tie it around your neck, you can do whatever you'd like to put it on, tie it around your ankle. You got a foot ache, wrap your foot up in it and go to sleep and you'll see when you wake up, your foot will be different. You won't have the same problems uh, that, you, <laughs> that you had uh, when you uh, uh, first went to sleep. So that's what you can do a lot with your prayer cloth. You can take uh, uh, threads out of it and put them in your hair shower cap when you shower so that you won't be without your prayer cloth in any time, day or night. I keep my prayer cloth pinned on me during the day and at night when I'm on my pajamas, at night I have a prayer cloth on. So I'm never without it, never. I always want to know, I want the Lord to know that I'm basking in his healing, his holy healing power. So I keep it on day and night and it helps me so much. And so at this time you can just set your oil. You went and bought a bottle of pure virgin olive oil. Just take it and set it on your hanky like I'm doing now. I know you're imitating me 
And that's good. That's good. Uh, Paul said, follow me as I also follow, follow Christ. And we know that these handkerchiefs that uh, um, were given out in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, they, Paul couldn't touch everybody. So he just gave, gave out, prayed over hankies, processed them the way they should be according to the Bible, and gave them out. And so that's to say we do just what we're imitating Paul, okay? And then the great results. I, I wish sometime, uh, I wish we had a talk show uh, so that I could just talk to people and, and listen to them and, and, and tell them uh, how God can heal. I have so many testimonies I could give. It would take much too long to say. So I'm going to pray this brief prayer. And before we have our sinner's prayer and go right to... Uh, and to I love you. Somebody back there saying, did she quit? Did she already say I love I love Iranians and that I love uh, uh, Afghanis? Uh, no, I didn't. Not yet, but I will. And that I love Norwegians? Just wait. We'll get to that part, okay? Heaven, now you pray with me. Put your hands on your oil in Jesus' name. So well, I don't have any oil. Put it on your neck or your head or your breast or your, our shoulders, whatever hurts. Your head, you, you can't remember no more? Put your hands on your head. Okay, you forgetting? Put your hands on your head. God knows all about your brain and the, the, the uh, neurological system, okay? Lord, in Jesus' name, we put our, and we pray for this oil and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take some and spread it on our, our prayer cloth after we get finished praying. And we know you'll stop pain instantly when the oil is used and that you will direct your holy healing power to whatever's needed in our body. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask you to heal, oh God, the brain, the medulla, cerebellum, the cerebral cortex, and the cortex, uh, the uh, spinal, the brain stem, spinal cord, spinal column, every part of the brain, the cortex, and all that, the cerebellum, we, we ask you to heal the brain. And Lord, heal the musculoskeletal system. We ask you to heal the renal and liver system. We're asking you to heal, oh Lord, uh, the circulatory system. We're asking you to heal the, the dermis and the epidermis. We're asking you to heal, oh God, every part that's wrong in the body, uh, we're asking you to heal. Lord, uh, the mental part the, that we can't see, we're asking you to heal that. Someone's having problems, Lord, uh, and they, maybe they can't determine what it is. But Lord, when they use their oil and their prayer cloth, Lord, we're asking you to heal them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Heal every type of cancer, uh, melanoma, carcinoma, blastoma, lymphoma, every type of cancer. Leukemia, we're asking you to heal the diabetes and the pancreas. We're asking you, Lord, to, we also commit to you um, the every, every system uh, in the body, every system, the, the immune and the endocrine system. Heal the endocrine system in Jesus' name. Digestive and elimination system. In Jesus' name, we're asking you to heal from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the, all those that have lost loved ones, oh God, we pray especially at this time for the family of Russell John Kruger of Minneapolis, a former police officer, detective, the head of the moral squad in Minneapolis, uh, who passed away uh, with full honors and is a beautiful family. We're asking you to bless the entire Kruger family, all the loved ones and all the many things and accolades that, that he has accomplished on the earth. We know he's resting with you and we believe, oh God, as he, he was my, one of my prayer partners and we used to pray together on the phone. I would pray until all his pain left and we thank you for the life. We went to celebrate at the Fourth Baptist Church in Plymouth Minnesota, we went to celebrate his home, home going, and it was a beautiful celebration. So we thank you for the life 
of Rus John Russell John Kruger. That's Russell John Kruger. We thank you for his life. And we thank you for everyone listening, everyone with a physical problem, helping to write for their prayer cloth, write for their free prayer cloth. In Jesus' name, help them to write. Or they can call. In Jesus' name, we ask all these blessings. Amen and amen. All right, I want to tell everybody that I love them. And uh, uh, we love everybody. Uh, we love um, uh, Sister Darcy and I had the pleasure of going to the, the uh, um, Scandinavian festival, summer festival at Minnehaha Park. We had a wonderful time. And that was a Swedish and we saw the crowning of the, the, prin the princess and the queen and king. Uh, it was just beautiful. They had, they had beautiful, beautiful services and all kinds of booths from Swedish and Norwegian, Finnish, Danish, and Icelandic. So if you missed it, if you didn't go out to Como for the Scandinavian Summerfest, you missed it because it was wonderful. And Lord, we're just, we just thank you for everyone that's in need. We know they're not in pain now. We know that. When light on the gospel comes, the pain goes. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we just ask you to just continue to heal every sickness and disease. And Lord, we're asking you to bless uh, all of the nationalities that we pray for in a special way. Those we mentioned in Jesus' name. We love Canadians and we love the UK and uh, uh, all of the British from top to bottom. We love everything. We love Africa. We love Europe. We love Asia. Uh, we love um, all the, uh, the American Indians called the first, they want to be called the first Americans and the, the Arapaho and the Sioux and the Chippewa friends that we have, we're asking you to bless them. Uh, the Montana Crow and, the, and the, uh, all the Indian nations, we, we thank God for, we love uh, uh, Africa, we love Asia, we love Europe, and we just love everybody. And we love Cubans, and we love Hispanics, and we love Mexicans, and we love Somalis, and Liberians we love, and we love Kenyans, the Kisi, and the Kikuyu, and the Maasai. We love everybody. We love Nigerians, and uh, we love Australians, those from down under, New Zealanders. We love Sicilians. The Sicilians, yes, we love Italy, and we love Malta, and we love, we love everybody, everybody. And we love um, all of those that, um, that can't, uh, can't help themselves. Lord, the, the, all of the AIDS, the countries that are suffering from malnutrition and no water and all the things that cause disease and sickness, please bless everyone, everywhere. We love African Americans. Yes, we love everybody. We have Austrians and Hungarians. We love everybody. Germans, French. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. And we love Israelis. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Darcy, I, I think we, um, can we do a sinner's prayer quick before we sing? I think so. And you think they can come to the Lord and make up their mind? Yes, they can. All yes, right. yes, they All will. Right. In Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive me of my sins. And Lord, please accept me into your kingdom. Please accept me into your kingdom. Here on earth. Here on earth. And when we leave here. And when we leave here. 
We're asking you, Lord, to forgive me because I know I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me. I know I'm a sinner. And I know that you'll wash all my sins away. I know that you will wash all of my sins away. And put them in the sea of forgetfulness. And put them in the sea of forgetfulness. To remember them against me. To remember them against me. No more. No more. So I love you. So I love you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. And and thank you for accepting me. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to, um, what are we going to sing? Well, we can sing um, At the Cross or something. Jesus on the main line, I'll take Jesus for mine. What? Okay. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is thy flow that makes me white as snow. No longer fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is thy flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. 